Ah, good day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. I'm stuck inside today, so I thought we might have a talk about marketing whatever you produce off your property. The first step on a property or farm or farmlet or whatever you want to call them nowadays that I think you should consider before you grow anything, breed anything, whatever you think you'd like to sell is to make sure there is actually a market for your produce. When we came to our place here and we developed it, the reason we went into cattle because there was a well established market and it was something that we both knew something about. So here really our options were to either do something on a really small scale and market it ourselves. So that pretty well would have ruled out animals because in Australia controls on selling animals is very tight. I mean not live animals, I mean you can sell a chook or a cow or a sheep to someone to keep live. Once it's butchered and turned into meat then it becomes very difficult. To sell butchered animals is a huge undertaking in Australia. There's such tight controls on how the meat is butchered, inspected, etc. that it's really impossible almost for small operators like us to get involved in that side of it. We sell the animals live and then whoever buys them either keeps them live or they slaughter them and they've got the facility to do that. There is exceptions to this. In a lot more settled areas where there's a lot of little slaughterhouses you can actually take your cattle there and get one or two or three beasts or pigs or whatever you want slaughtered and then bring it home and pack it yourself you'll need to have suitable permission and inspections etc for a packing facility to do that but if you can get the meat slaughtered and inspected somewhere at a reasonable cost then it would be a lot more possible to market your own meat. Or if you had a slaughterhouse and a butcher shop and it was all approved and you were a person who could do it or you had a person who could do it with the suitable qualifications and approvals. Although it's not strictly about marketing I will just touch on the subject of home killed meat. In Queensland you can kill your own meat and eat it, but it can't leave the property. If you were to give your visitors a feed of meat to take home, that's not okay. It cannot leave the property, as I understand it. It can only be consumed on the property where it's slaughtered. But if someone came and bought a live cow off me, then took it home and slaughtered it, well then, that's fine. One thing that's really strange in Queensland is that commercial fishermen can catch, process, pack and sell their own product without having to have any sort of an approved facility. They just do it on the boat and then they can just sell it directly to the public which seems to be a bit of an anomaly and I don't know why this is, whether there's just not the risk with fish or what, what the rationale for it is but that is as it stands at the moment. One thing I should touch on with marketing your produce is how do you decide what's marketable when you grow it and how do you keep abreast of all that? Well, well in the case of cattle if we see a trend that's bringing more money one way than another we will aim our product to that market. As a few years ago bulls weren't worth much. Nobody seemed to want bulls. I mean you could sell them but they weren't worth as much as steers. Now, bulls under a certain weight are worth a lot of money. So we're keeping more bulls and the really good ones we're selling as breeding bulls and the ones that aren't really suitable for breeding we're selling directly in the sale yards and doing very well out of it. Whereas years ago Bulls just weren't worth keeping. They are a lot more trouble to keep so you do need extra money for them. They have a tendency to want to get out and do what bulls do. So you have to weigh up the inconvenience with the amount of extra money you're going to make. Again in the case of females, sometimes you're better off to get the females in calf and then have them preg tested. Preg tested in calf cows may be worth a lot more money at times. You have to offset the price of having the cows or heifers tested to see if they are in calf 
and how much extra you're going to actually get for them to make the whole exercise worthwhile. Again, I guess if you're into vegetables or fruit, you know, and say peaches were selling a lot dearer than oranges and peaches were easier to grow or just as easy as oranges, then perhaps you would think, well, okay, I'll grow more peaches and less oranges and make more money that way. The problem with that is with long-term things like fruit trees, that could take quite a few years to mature and bear fruit, is that the market trend could have changed by the time you've grown them and they're fruiting. A crystal ball would be really handy in those sorts of situations. At the moment up on the tablelands, people are going out of milk and all sorts of other things to go into growing trees. Now one thing I can see, if they all start growing trees, say there was going to be three times the amount of fruit on the market, then market forces, because there's an oversupply, could drive the price down to the point where they don't make money. And I've seen this happen time and time again over my lifetime. Well, I've pointed out a few of the pitfalls with it all. I think if you're thinking of going into something or growing something or breeding something, the more you can do to actually market the product, and today with computers and things like Facebook and your phone and all those sorts of things, there is a lot more opportunity. The more control you have over the whole product, right from conception through to sale, the more potential there is to value add and all those sorts of things if you need to. What I would be very, very careful of is having a product that relied on a big company or get involved with supermarkets, etc. unless you're in a really big way and really had the game sewn up because I just know of so many people in that situation who've been screwed. I suppose at the end of the day, it's a lot cheaper to do research and find out it's not worthwhile than to go into it hell for leather and put years of your time and effort and money into working towards getting a product only to find you can't sell it. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Life Australia. We'll see you next time.